Oh, Hit record because we will have a flood of requests tomorrow. I'm sure they'll flood in. Hey, our pal in Alaska wants a recording. I send it after every web show and Holly Bobo, the Cusco Swim District. And here we go, Tom. Welcome to the Inside Ride. It is a wonderful top 20 web show twice a month, feeding you, nurturing, loving you from a distance. Um, we're going to focus on what's really going on in our inner lives on our Inside Ride. We are thrilled to have you with us tonight. Um, each episode, we'll talk uh, talk about kind of what's happening in our world in regards to social emotional learning, real life application of different concepts, and of course, we always have a guest panelist. We're thrilled to have Steve Ring tonight. Um, tonight, we'll go as, as follows. I'll introduce Tom here in a moment. We'll do a thought of the week. We'll have some wonderful banter from my hotel room, and then we'll uh, we'll get things going. My name is Kevin Brennan. I'm one of the co-owners, authors, writer for Top 20 Training. I am pleased to introduce my friend, Tom Cody. Yo, and Kevin, where are you? Tell the group I, where you are. I am in Aberdeen, South Dakota. I drove five hours. I'm nestled in. I, I have some nice ambient, ambient lighting behind me and a good internet feed, so I'm doing all right. And if Show you look- Show me your water. Show me that you picked up a water from the Casey's. You got the that's big water of jug. pheasants. I got huh? pheasants. And in case I get parched, yeah. <laughs> I got a water jug the size of my head. See, top 20, we go everywhere. We'll go anywhere. We'll go anywhere where the weather is cold or warm. It's about 100 below zero here. Uh, my thought of the day, this occurred to me today. The students aren't getting as much content this year what they're missing in content, they're going to make up in time management. This is a star quality. These fifth, sixth, seventh graders are basically taking a college schedule by being Zoom and turning their assignments on cyberspace and then plan their Tuesday and we're not going to meet Wednesday because of the sanitizer. This has been awesome for kids. They're going to learn in advance how to budget their time, plan their time. That's a hidden benefit to all this. Uh, yeah. It'd be a big benefit if some if educators would let these students in on the secret of it, because you're absolutely right. Most people just look at the the annoyance, the tedious nature, the all the pitfalls. But and of course, those are there. But why not take a different look at it? So teachers out there listen, share that with your kids tomorrow. Tell them what a bonus this has been. They'll probably groan, <laughs> but someday they're going to figure out that time management is a huge skill and they really learn to master it this year. Uh, Kev, any invitations this week? I Again, I have no shortage of invitations or curveballs, conditions that come up in our lives to invite us to go below the line and break our thinking. So the Brennan family, meaning my family, decided that it would be a good week to gut our kitchen and at the same time get a brand new puppy, seven-week-old puppy. Kids have been begging for a puppy for two-plus years. We finally caved. We have the cutest little puppy. We have a kitchen that doesn't function. And then we got thrown the ultimate invitation of negative 18 below. So me, 3 a.m., middle of my yard with a shivering puppy, and I'm shivering. So those have been invitations, but I have kept my day, meaning I haven't let it kind of spin me. And it's right over your shoulder. I love it. I want to say this real quick before I throw it back to you. I was talking to my wife on the phone. And for those of you out there, I have four kids. Uh, one of them is a ninth grade boy. And if you've been around ninth grade boys, you know that some ninth grade boys don't have words. They have more just sounds. Hey, Sean, how's the day? When Gina went and picked him up from wrestling and was talking to him on the way home. And I go, how was it? She goes, I think he was crabby, but he's not getting my day. I'm not letting him take my day anyways. I'm like, well, good for you. You got to you get the power of choice in that girl. Get it. What about you, Martin? What about you? Well, the weather, I mean, it's, I don't know where the rest of you are, but we're in Minnesota and it's been like, I don't know, a thousand below. What's the difference? I don't even know, look at the numbers anymore. Spring is coming, everybody says, but I'm just keeping my day. And, and that leads us to, uh, to our friends in South Dakota and uh, Steve and Molly Ring. Uh, keep your day is a theme that you're going to hear a lot tonight, is that there's going to be things tomorrow in your day at school, wherever you are. But keep your day is a is a major theme with our guest star Steve, and we also got his better half with him tonight, uh, Molly. Uh, these two live in the Sioux Falls area. Am I correct, people? And Steve works. He crosses the border. He's got a passport. He gets into Iowa every day and goes over Rock Valley. 
and Molly teaches school in Brandon, South Dakota. So let's welcome, uh, and could we have some exclamation marks in the chat, please, for Steve and Molly Ring. That's our version of web show applause. Uh, thanks for joining us, people. It's good to see uh, you both. Uh, Kev, you want to lead it off? Talk to Molly. Yeah. So to, to everyone listening, Molly's an educator. Molly crossed paths with top 20 training somewhere along the lines, I believe with Mr. Tom Cody and Paul Burnaby. Um, and then Molly uh, hatched a bit of a plan for, <laughs> for the individual sitting next to her. Um, but first, uh, Molly, something had to occur within you to, to even think this stuff is, is, is worth taking on. So maybe, maybe just share a little bit of your journey and then maybe a little bit of your plan for, yeah. for Paula. Yeah, so I, it was probably within my first five years of teaching. Uh, Paul and Tom came to Brandon, South Dakota. And when he said, hey, I'm a math teacher, I'm going to give you something that you can actually use tomorrow. It's not big lesson plans. I, he hooked me in. I'm like, perfect. Because a lot of times there's English teachers or social studies teachers, and it's just not the world I live in. So he talked about pods and, you know, the keep your day and the five at the door. And it really just resonated with me. Like, oh, I can do that. Like, I can communicate to my kids how much they mean to me. And then Mari was talking about old Tom, reminded me of my then husband, my old Steve, uh, where he kind of said, you know, I used to live below the line and I would visit above. And that's really, it just, that reminded me of him. And of course, Tom would be the first person like, don't bring this home to your husband and say, hey, I'm going to change my husband. But in my mind, you know, like, yeah, but I do need to change my husband. So I, I bought the book and, and slowly was going to try to integrate it into his life. And yep. what was your little secret plan, Molly? Where were the books left? Where were they left? Oh, it was on the bedstand. It'd be underneath remotes. He'd move them. I'd find them. I'd get them back out. And I would, you know, drop little lines. Of, oh, you know, Paul and Tom, they would say, keep your day. You want to live above the line. And he just, at the time, he wasn't ready for it. Mm -hmm. But after a few years, it finally, something clicked. And then he wanted, he was intrigued. He, he cracked open the book. The Excellent. definition of true love, Molly. Just with this guy. <laughs> and Molly referred Seriously. to the old Tom. If, if you don't know me, Steve and I suffer from the same disease. We were pretty negative people back in the day. And a lot of this stuff changed my life. And that my story kind of got into Molly's head. And then she was going to share it with her then struggling husband. So yeah. Steve, what's your version of this, Steve? So Molly comes home with this book. And what are you well, thinking? Before I mention that, I just want to let Kevin know that I think the mug thing is a South Dakota uh, deal. <laughs> so, Look at that thing. Well, 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 welcome to South Dakota. Love nice it. to have you. Glad to be here. Cheers. Uh, no, no, Molly's right on. I mean, uh, she came home uh, from the training and just was really inspired. And, and, and if there was a, a Webster's Dictionary definition, back a number of years ago of what a bottom 80 type person looks like, it would be, you know, it would, it would have a picture of me right, right, right in the margins there. So she was trying to be strategic and she would share some of the things that were uh, communicated that day. She, uh, she mentioned she'd leave the books um, by the bedside table or by my chair or under remote was a popular place. Cause I would, you know, check that out. Um, yeah. I think when the in the fridge one time was one. I think that, that was that, that was one of them. So and I think I bought the top twenty parents book as well as the the teacher one because I figured well maybe if I, we were new parents at the time like it was a parenting book you know like to yeah. somehow to get them interested. It still yeah, there's is. the hook. There's the hook. <laughs> but I, but I was I was pretty good being how I was. I thought I thought I had it all figured out and um, I didn't need any help and. You know, I, I've been to the trainings, and so you always have the group that kind of sits in the back because they were forced to be there. I guess I suppose I would have been that guy, yeah. you know, um, and that, I just, I, was, I wasn't into it. That time, Steve, you were in the restaurant business? Yeah, yeah, almost uh, almost 20 years in, in the food service business, yeah. And, and you hate it? You hated your employees and your customers pretty much? Yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> I mean, you, you know, I, I, hate, I hated myself. I didn't like anybody I worked with. They didn't like me. I mean, it was all mutual. And it is a lot of days away. You were too blind. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I calculated, I think in a 19, 20 year career, I had about 7,000 days and I probably gave about 5,000 of them away. So there's quite a few people wandering around South Dakota 
with a lot of days I'll never get back. So and I was willingly just giving them away and the, that, that seemed to be fine. And that was, that seemed to be working for me. Yeah. You know, well, I, I, I was smart and had it all figured out. You, it sounds like you were, you were on autopilot and probably fairly effective at being on autopilot. I mean, you were going to work, getting stuff done, you know, maybe the relationship may have been strained between you and your employees, et cetera. Um, but the language of keep keep your day or giving days away, just a reminder to everyone listening, it's it's when those hits come, those invitations come that kind of just knock us off course. Um, a lot of times they stick with us because those negative moments kind of, they're sticky. And then we just kind of walk with them the rest of the day. And in a sense, they steal our day or we give it to this negative moment. So the whole thing over Tom's shoulder and what Steve Meyer is saying is we want to make a choice because we have the choice to keep it. So you gave away five thousand plus days. I, I'm yeah, that, that seems pretty. That seems pretty fair. When, when I first met Steve, he says my next door neighbor's got seventeen of them. <laughs> the most generous. So, so, yeah. so, so yeah. cut to the chase, Steve. So now you you look at the book. There's a training coming up in Sioux Falls, and you decide to attend with your wife, right? Yeah. So I mean, I, I had made a career change, and I, I worked for then I, then I started working for a, a health system. And um, I think just at that point, I'd become sick and tired of being sick and tired. And, I, you know, my my family didn't deserve that guy anymore. And so, yeah, I started, I picked up the book. I was thumbing through it. And um, I think somewhere close around that time was a, was a time where um, Tom and Paul were going to be in Sioux Falls to do a training through uh, South Dakota Ed, Education Association. So, um, Molly and some of the her Brandon teachers were going to go again because it'd been a few years since they they'd heard heard it, and so I was like, oh, I'm going to sign up and go, and and um, so yeah, then I showed up, and man, I, I still have the notes from that from that that uh, two day session. I mean, it's cover to cover, page to page. I remember at the very first break um, we had, I um, was brave enough to uh, wander up to Tom and and Paul, and I said, Hey, I just wanted to introduce myself. I, I'm the most generous man in the state of South Dakota. I've given more days away, you know, than, than anyone. And so that, that's kind of how we, our conversation started there. So, but Steve, literally the first break is an hour and 20 minutes. So you had had the, I mean, it didn't take you long to see something in yourself. Oh yeah. I, I think the thing that really caught me and grabbed a hold of me was and it was part of the keep your day um, conversation was that you know conditions don't determine your experience choice does and I, that really resonated I and mean, that really hit home it's like I am choosing this like well, I don't know why I, I'm, I'm choosing to do all this and I'm allowing all these outside factors that I have literally no control over whatsoever to dictate how how, how my day goes and I'm willing to allow that to, to bother me and allow that to bother me and this thing and that and just give my days to all these people. I think those, those two key things really resonated. And I, and I had just really bought into that. And, and every, you know, that, that was the start of everything really right there. Yeah, and I kept on saying, like, whatever, summertime, you listen to him. He's, he's gonna be the one that you're gonna connect with. Because there was a lot of the things that you would say about your old, old self that was very much like Steve. And, and he, yeah, you saw that too. Like, oh, completely, yeah. So yeah I, I, yeah, I was pretty much hanging on Tom's every word, like, yep, <laughs> yep, yep, that's me, that's me. Yeah. Well, so when, any training I go to now, there's always, I sit at a table and there's usually someone at the table that'll say, oh, my, my spouse needs to hear this. I was that spouse. <laughs> so I usually wonder how that goes when, because you know, it took me quite a few years to crack open a book. It's like, well, when they're ready, they're ready. But then, until that day. Was, <laughs> Steve, was, a, was, was blame one of your go-to negative mental habits? Yeah, I mean, I think everything was somebody else's fault. I mean, I, it wasn't mine. I, like I said, I, I was I was great. I was good. I, <laughs> I figured out. It was, it was everyone else's problem. It was somebody else. And yeah, blame was really easy. Sure. You know? um, yeah, a good blame shield. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that, was, that was a really big factor, too, is that, yeah, blame. So and being right. You know, I, that, that, that being right thing. It's like, I'm right. And, and, and then learning that, you know, don't be right, be effective, like have effective conversations, have effective relationships. It's not about being right. It's having, it's being effective. And I think that was a big one for me too. It's like, oh man, that's, that, that says a lot. Yeah. yeah. Steve's, just, Steve's just checking his way through the book chapter by chapter. With us here. Hey, Molly, is this for real? 
now you're you're the gauge here you you're living yeah. with this guy i assume yeah right? I, yeah uh, we do. We do what did you day. what did you spot like three yeah. weeks later what did you start to notice so initially you know when he, in that first thing he's just writing all these notes and he's very much a writer i'm like oh he's taking this in and he would refer back to them and then he would just say look we got to keep your day and you know hey can't get out of it get into it and then he's like do you want to be right or do you want to be effective and it was all great until i was then below the line and he's like putting it back at me I'm like man uh, but then as he was taking, I've, learned, I've learned to not do that too that's also a, a bad, <laughs> it's a very bad to, to throw top 20 back in someone's face that's not getting it <laughs> yeah but then as you in his new job was bringing top 20 he was bringing you and and paul to rock valley iowa i was just like a proud mom like oh my gosh like he gets it and he loves it and the fact that their school district is doing so much with it i feel in a small small part responsible that for that whole town getting it so i i just love it and it's it's real like he uses it often it's still something we have to work on it's a continuous process you don't just flip a switch and you're done but it's a nice it's definitely helped in our relationship and our jobs and our family to kind of have that well, that's, terminology. that's awesome so walk me through it now steve you work at Hague Hague. And yeah, I work at, uh, I'm the clinic director at Hay Health Center in Rock Valley, Iowa. So, and so you brought this to the hospital first, and then the Chamber of Commerce. Walk us through what you did in your town. It's, yeah, so it's how it started is, you know, um, our, our uh, leadership group um, really emphasizes staff development and leadership development. And so every, every year we'd have kind of a theme, and I was talking to our HR director, who was also, I'd say, kind of the lead for all of our staff development, her name is Tammy Faber. And I said, hey, I've got this stuff that I think might be really good. I think, I think that would, you know, it talks, talks about culture and, and, um, and um, I, I think that that would, would be an option for us someday if we'd ever want to look at that. And so we talked about it for a little bit and, and she really liked it. Um, and around that same time, um, our leadership group actually went to listen to a motivational speaker that the Rock Valley Chamber of Commerce had brought to town because the goal of that session was to kind of implement a culture that kind of impacts the community to have kind of a common language and how we can, how we can make an impact in our community. And Adam Rossman, uh, the community um, activities director and the chamber of commerce director was leading that program. Um, and he, he had mentioned at the conclusion of it, they're looking for things like that, that they, that they can do, they can bring in. And so after the meeting was over, um, Tammy and I approached him and said, Hey, um, you're, you're looking for something like this, maybe this would be something that, you know, you'd be interested in from, from a chamber perspective or from the community. And we started talking about, you know, the, the genesis of top 20 and where it came from. And it was built, you know, uh, from uh, education with teachers. And we thought that, gosh, we could maybe reach out to um, the Rock Valley Community School Superintendent, Chad Jansen, and see if um, he would be interested in, in me having a conversation. So that little core group then reached out to Chad um, and Chad happened to know um, the superintendent over at Harrisburg in South Dakota who'd gone through top 20. And so he'd reached out to the superintendent there and had a really good conversation and, and said how effective it was. And then so our group got back together and said, how can we get together as a, as a group and bring this training to Rock Valley and not only get it in the health center, you know, one of the biggest employers in town, um, bringing businesses in from a chamber perspective and then having um, the teachers come in and then to be able to implement it in the school. And that's really how that all started. And within a pretty short amount of time, we had um, Paul Burnaby and Tom Cody down to Rock Valley, Iowa, I think in 2017, 18, somewhere in that range and like trained about a thousand plus people. And yeah, it was huge. By the way, a thousand plus is a lot in Rock Valley people. That may not be a lot in Chicago. Yeah, there's yeah, there's thirty, there's thirty five hundred in town. So. Right, but that's a profound deal. Like we've been doing top twenty for two decades, Kevin, and really, Steve and and Molly and the chamber, they really took this on as a gift to the whole community, which is makes the story really unique. Usually, this is a school thing. Sure, well, I applaud Steve for having the foresight to take into the hospital and the, the when, bank and the whole deal. Steve, when you moved over to Heg from from your previous job, were you uh, did you move over as Steve 2.0, meaning the real Steve, 
or were you when when did the transformation hit? Yeah, I, I worked I worked at a year up at Avera McKinnon in Sioux Falls, kind of the mother, the Avera Health of the mothership for for uh, for where we work. Um, and um, I think when I'd made that change from one career to the next, I thought this is a good opportunity for me just to kind of reset um, and, and kind of start fresh and just sure. And I think, I think too, I think when I entered into that, because I mean, I didn't grow up with a background in healthcare is I wasn't really in charge of anything. So I think it was a lot easier, you know, to not have to be a decision maker. And I, I think I could just be, you know, a, a good employee and just be a hard worker and just, you know, do, do the right things. And, and um, I, I think that that carried out, carried over and yeah, the top 20 stuff, but that was really, really big. We well, just got three, four minutes left. Steve, could you talk about the school? Because this is really geared towards class. I know the school in Rock Valley has done some wonderful things with top 20. And it's all because of you. You brought it down there. What are you proud of that the school's doing? I know you had a story about stupid. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, the school really took it over. They bought the curriculum. They've implemented it, you know, in, in all grade levels. Um, you know, they've done some special events with it. A, a couple of things that come to mind is at um, basketball games, um, they make it a point to bring out students um, at, during pregame and um, recognize them for top 20 principles. It's not, you know, we're not recognizing them for academics or athletics, the, 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 the human doer side of it. It's more they're recognizing them for being good human beings and practicing top 20 in school. So, I mean, you know, in front of a big crowd, that was a huge one. They had a they had a uh, mistakes USA pageant where they had a Mr. and Miss Mistake um, where they just learned learned about failure and, and mistakes and and how you recover from that and failure you know is an event it's not a person and I think one of the really the more clever ones they did is you know you guys talk about keeping stupid in a box well they did an assembly program in their gymnasium one day and at a funeral for stupid they buried stupid like the stupid does not exist it passed away years ago now so it doesn't exist in their school so i thought that was that was pretty pretty inventive but that was that was pretty impactful and yeah. you know even our health system we use it for staff development we use it in every every aspect of, of what we do in terms of our hiring process in terms of onboarding you know uh our ceo glenn zevenbergen comes in and talks to every, every new employee about mission and vision and then spends 30 minutes talking about core values of top 20 you know mm. help people succeed communicate you matter see problems own problems you know honor the absent i mean so every everyone gets that message that's our ceo having that conversation you know with with, with our new team members and i think that that has been really impactful for our group as well that we continue to use it wow kevin wow that's amazing that's amazing well and and that's that's the goal with with those four cornerstones of a healthy workplace culture or a healthy effective culture of learning so often we find ourselves wishing people behaved and acted and produced in a certain way rather than up front saying hey guess what let me just explain what we do here we don't talk poorly about people we honor the absent we see problems we own them we we send messages intentionally of you matter right we help everyone if that sounds like the right fit let's go hop on board if not, this is probably not the place for you. And, and I think there's great power in that because this is what I'm hearing from Molly and what, I hear, what I'm hearing from you is all about this power of choice. You get to make the call. You're not a, you're not a bystander in your life anymore. Um, which yeah, is, you're, you're not that powerless victim of life. You know, you're, you're right. not, you, know, you, you have the power of choice and you control that. And, and the reason I asked really when your transformation was is because when you try to tell people about a principle, whether it's top 20 or anything, but you try to tell someone about something new. They haven't seen the white rabbit yet. They haven't seen it. And, and unless they see it living and breathing in you, it doesn't matter. So obviously something was resonating from deep within you that was very positive that, uh, that got people to go along. And I think it's magnificent. Yeah. You know, I was thinking about this the other day and I remember a few years back when I was getting into this and I, and I'd always kind of said that, you know, I think, you know, I feel like top 20, you know, saved my life. And then the older I've gotten, I feel like maybe that's a little bit over dramatic. Um, it certainly changed my life, but I think what I can confidently say that it saved me from myself, you sure. know, top 20 saved me from myself um, because I, I realized I was just getting in my own way every single day. So thanks, man. Thanks for what no, you Thank you guys. Me. Yeah. But it, we're nothing unless we meet people like you. Otherwise we're just people <laughs> talking into a zoom deal here. Well, she's to blame for the whole thing then. So, hey, uh, 
Audience, you. say goodbye and thanks in the chat to Steve and Molly. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Thanks, thanks for having us. Uh, Keep up the great work. Thanks, gang. All the best. Kev, so, you got a mint to attendees. Yep. Here's here's my take on that whole thing: is the power of one. It's the power of choice. It's the power. But one lady, Molly, hands it to one guy, Steve. Steve hands it to the hospital. Hospital hands it to the community chamber of commerce. Boom! It's in the school. The school hands it to a fifth grader. Maybe the fifth grader becomes a teacher in 20 years mm. and gives it to somebody else. You know, and, and this is not about tooting the horns on top 20. All our job is is to get it out to people and see what clicks. And for this, that guy, it clicked. And and yeah, absolutely. It's it's really has nothing to do with us. I mean, he said he got out of his own way, and that's really what a lot of our work does with students, staff, businesses is there's there's strategies, principles, concepts that if you are intentional with them, can get certain things out of your own way so you can be as 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 effective as humanly possible whether you're a teacher mom dad uh community member Hague health center whatever it may be um so yeah yeah that was it's a fantastic story i'm so glad he he took the time yeah. to share it with us uh two weeks march 2 let me do the promo here we're going to get a couple of teachers on from wyzetta high school in uh in minnesota here it's a western suburb of the twins go wyzetta uh they're just a tiny school with like 900 freshmen. So you probably don't relate if you're out there. I think it's the biggest school in Minnesota or one of the top two. Uh, Grace and Dawn are beyond. They're doing miracle things with kids all the way from the ALC kid, the alternatives kids, all the way up to the top drawer, uh, senior mentor kids, student leaders. And they're doing amazing things in the classroom with, with some of this social emotional stuff uh, from top 20. Uh, Kev, what do we got for announcements tonight? Awesome. So, oh, so join us on March 2. Please mark on your calendar. We'll email you. But don't miss Grace and Dawn on March 2nd. Yep. And as always, to get that information, you can just, uh, starting tomorrow, you can go to our website, go to www.top20training.com. Go to the trainings tab. There'll be an info. You scroll down. You'll see the web of show. You just put your name and email. And we'll send you the link. It'll be great. Uh, please, the other thing I want please, you to do. Please spread the word too. Let's get each one of you get two three more people we want to build this so it's helpful to more people yep for sure the other thing i want you to do when you're on our website is opt in for our newsletter it's on the home page you just scroll down it says let's stay connected you just put your name in there every week our skipper paul burnaby our director creates a wellness wednesday and it's a little nugget of information highly applicable uh this wednesday well if you get on there quick enough maybe you'll get it but it's 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 about love it's a great thing um, each Wednesday, it's a new topic. So uh, just send your email, click in on the newsletter. If not, just email Kevin at top20training.com and I'll make sure to get you subscribed. Would love to do that. Um, ooh, Our Twitter handle just went in the chat. Hit us up on Twitter. I'm doing Tuesday with Tom. I'm hitting, uh, today we talked about that time management piece. Uh, Steve referenced the teen book. If you're thinking about doing this with kids at any level, uh, especially the middle and high school level, uh, get a hold of that book. And again, it's all on the website. Uh, Kev, what are you looking forward to this week? What's you going know, on in your world? Aberdeen tomorrow. I tell you what I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to working with students. I get to work. I have two days ahead of me working with students. I, I will have parents and adults as well, uh, staff, but uh, I've got a lot from grade four up through seniors. So I'm looking forward to getting involved, getting uh, safely close to folks again and uh, sharing some concepts. And, and they're just going to fuel me up. You watch out. I'm going to run home instead of drive. I'll have that much energy. Yeah. What about yeah, you? I'm sick, I'm sick of Zoom. And this has been great to connect with people with the web show and these Zooms. But I'm dying to get I can't believe I'm saying this. I'm dying to get back on Delta Airlines and get out and see some of you in your communities. Uh, thought of the day again. Keep your day. Steve rang that bell. Let's not lose it. Tomorrow's going to be Wednesday, the 17th of Feb. Don't give it away. Don't give it away to a slouchy kid. Don't give it away to a rude checkout person. If you're stopping for a 40 pound diet Coke of Kevin's size there, don't give your days away. Uh, uh, anything else? 
Yeah, real quick, all of our posters, like the, the yellow Keep Your Day, can be ordered on our website. The one behind Tom was a gift from our partner, Willow Sweeney. That's not for sale. You'd have to go to a word working shop and show them what to do. So unfortunately, Karen, those aren't for sale, but maybe maybe someday we can make it happen. we got to hire um, a woodcutter. Yep. Uh, we're going to be signing off here in a, in a second, but do do here's a challenge. Not only keep your own day, but maybe share this concept with someone. You see someone giving their day away to the checkout person, to the broken phone, to the, the snowstorm. Remind them about the power they have in their life to make a positive difference by keeping their day. And you know what? It's 8.30. We're not keeping them for another minute. This has been the Inside Ride. Thank you so much to Molly and Steve Ring. Thank you so much, Tom. It's always good to see you. We'll see everyone in two weeks. See you on March 2nd, gang. Keep your date. Keep it.